Since when am I Faust? Chapter 11, Part 2 There was a moment of silence that passed as my words hung in the air. Then I heard the mare at the back of my mind sigh, and she gave a sad chuckle. She took over, and I heard Lauren's voice as she said, That's... Our gaze turned to Tia and Luna. Was their father, and the mare was my mentor. They're gone now. There was a deep-seated pain in her heart as she said this, and before I knew it, I was back in control. My chest ached, and my breathing was shaky. With a sad smile, I tilted my head up and whispered to myself, You miss them, don't you? Yes, I miss them so very much. I breathed out and gave a slight nod, recognizing her pain. But I also understood that she was happy she made her decision, and that she'd do it again, if given a choice. I stood off to the side, absorbed in my thoughts. The click of a camera caught my attention, and I looked over to see two ponies standing with us that I hadn't met yet. One was a white mare with a white and purple mane, and the other was a blue stallion with a navy-colored mane. They were taking their own photos, but they also quickly noticed my gaze. Turning to look at me, the mare's eyes lit up, and she gave the camera to the stallion beside her and trotted over to me. A wide grin made its way onto her face as she approached me. Hello, you wouldn't happen to be Miss Faust, would you? Yes? I answered hesitantly. The mare's face beamed with excitement. I've heard so much about you, I'm Twilight Velvet, Shining's mother. Both him and Twilight have been singing your praises over the past couple of days. It's so nice to finally meet the mare every pony's talking about. My ears flattened against my head. Wait, every pony's talking about me? Why, yes, of course! It's been the talk of the whole city, the mysterious mare who appeared out of nowhere and single-hoofedly fought off an army. I reared back slightly. I didn't realize the whole city already knew about me. Not too far away, Celestia put a hoof to her forehead. Oh, yes, Mother, of course they do. I've been trying to keep things quiet as much as I could, but once the news got out, we ended up having to beat the news ponies off the door. It's been a real headache. I looked back at her with a surprised expression. Oh, uh, sorry about that. I didn't realize. I said with a shrug. Tia shook her head. It's not your fault, Mom. They're just very persistent, I guess. I said, then turned back to Velvet and raised an eyebrow. So you mentioned Shining and Twilight have been singing my praises? What exactly have they been saying? Velvet's smile turned to a grin, realizing what I was doing, and she happily joined into my little game. She raised her voice, making it loud enough for all to hear, and proceeded to say, Well, Shining's been going on and on about what you did during the wedding, and he keeps mentioning about how you revolutionized the guard's shielding technique. That's all she was able to get out, before the mare's mouth was promptly covered by both Shining and Twilight's. They had a look of worry and embarrassment on their faces. It was priceless. Please excuse her, Shining said, and Velvet raised her brow with amusement. An understanding gaze flashed across her faces. Teasing these kids was going to be so much fun. Before the conversation could progress any further, the photographer asked that they include the wedding party for the next set of photos. Twilight and her friends went up and stood together, and he clicked his camera at a ridiculous speed. Somehow, Rarity managed to strike a different pose for each shot. As he finished those, we moved on to a large family photo. That's where Tia, Luna, Twilight's parents, and myself came in. We all stood there and got a group shot. Once we finished that, we got a silly picture just for the fun of it. Finishing up, we made our way to the reception. On our way back, the girls switched shifts, and Luna raced the moon, beginning the night. When we arrived at the reception, every pony already sat at their assigned seating. The banquet had tables set up under a covered overhang, but the rest was open to the night air. I sat down at a long table with the rest of the wedding party. Shining and Cadence were in the center, and the rest of us were on either side of the two. The dinner itself seemed to be catered towards the nobility than anything else. But that's what one would expect from a royal banquet. Once every pony had eaten to their fill, excluding Pinky, the newly married couple stood up from their seats. They entered the center of the room, and everyone's attention turned to them. We watched with keen interest as the lights in the room suddenly dimmed and the subtle background music came to a halt. 
The live orchestra filled a sheet of music as they switched to a different song. Then they waited, keeping their eyes on the couple. The two were standing, facing each other. Then at their signal, the music began. Thus began their first dance as a married couple. It was rather interesting to me. The two danced with what I would guess to be the pony equivalents to a waltz. Both Tia and Lulu cooed at the sight, and I felt my ear lift at the sound of their voices, and a grin quickly spread across my face. Mentally stepping aside, I watched as Lauren took over. With a sly smile, Faust nudged her daughter's sides with her wings, and said, Well, that's one princess married off. Now just two more to go. Both princesses stiffened up at Lauren's words, and they turned their heads to look at her in protest. However, upon seeing the grin spread across Lauren's face, the princesses quickly realized that their mother was only pulling their leg. Celestia chuckled to herself, and Luna sighed in relief. For Celestia, it had been a while since she had been on the receiving end of such teasing. I felt myself regain control, and I glanced up at Celestia, and she gave me a playful nudge as she held down a blush. Picking up a glass, Tia took a sip of water, and she began to look around at the crowd with an awkward gaze. She hoped no eligible cults overheard our conversation. To her relief, there didn't seem to be any looking at her. But she stifled a laugh when she spotted a few stallions looking at Luna. As for every pony else, they had their attention on the two in the center of the dance floor. The crowd cheered for the couple as their performance came to an end. Cadence and Shining gave each other a small kiss. As they broke the kiss, the two stepped away from each other and smiled. Suddenly, a steady beat grew in time with the music, and the couple were beginning to dance to the beat. From out of nowhere, Pinkie Pie slid onto the dance floor with a microphone, and she shouted, All right! Who's ready to party? As she spoke, the pink mare spun around and hit a button that most of the guests had thought to be just another decoration. Confetti and streamers suddenly burst from the ceiling, and the music from the orchestra picked up with a funky beat. Twilight and her friends quickly ran out to the dance floor, and the rest of the guests soon followed. Fireworks erupted outside. They only added to the atmosphere of celebration. I got up and walked over to the balcony, enjoying the fresh night air. And that's when I noticed it. The whole city was lit up in celebration, and I found myself looking out in disbelief. I knew that Pinkie Pie could throw a party together, but this was on a completely different level than I had ever imagined. All of Canterlot was up in celebration, and from the dim lights in the distance, it looks like other towns and cities were as well. I was astonished, and I suddenly found myself with a newfound respect for the crazy mare. Glancing back at my daughters, I spotted Tia enjoying her time talking with a group of ponies. Luna, on the other hand, seems to be content with watching from her seat. I gave a frown, and with a quick flash of my horn, she was enveloped in an ember glow, and she let out a surprised yelp when I lifted her from her seat. Luna floated over to my side, and I set her down. She looked at me expectantly, and I flashed a grin and stuck my tongue out at her. She did the same back to me, and the two of us chuckled as we looked out at the night sky. Glancing in her direction, I asked her, Do you feel like dancing? Luna looked down and pursed her lips. With a shallow nod, she answered, Yes, I would like to, but I am unfamiliar with this music, and I have not danced in a very long time. She looked up at me with a sheepish expression, and admitted, I think I forgot how. Taking her concerns in stride, I walked a little closer and draped a wing over her back. Looking her in the eyes with a smile, I said, Luna, you don't have to worry about any specific type of dance. Just be yourself. Come on, you can't be worse than me, I guarantee it. Hey, I'm a great dancer! But I ain't, not even as human. Well, in that case, this should be interesting. Luna shook her head and looked at me. But mother, I'm a princess. I'm supposed to know how to- She trailed off as she looked down in embarrassment. Bumping up against her side, I waved a hoof, saying, Oh, who cares? Come on, Luna. I led her across the room through the crowd. On our way to find a clear area, we came across where Twilight was dancing. The little unicorn was having a blast, but at the same time, she couldn't dance to save her life. She was just so bad, it looked more like she was being electrocuted than any form of rhythmic movement. Poor Spike got too close and got thrown across the room from one of her flailing legs. Thankfully, AJ reacted quickly enough and caught the drake with a punch bowl she was standing beside. 
The baby dragon crawled out muttering to himself about every single party and went to get the towel that he brought with him. The nobility around her looked on with concern and backed away from the purple unicorn. Spotting the adorable spaz, I leaned closer to Luna and whispered, Notice how when it's just one pony, it looks silly. But if you add two or more, then it's just fun. The princess was confused. Then when I let go of her side, she looked at me with horror. Mother, you don't mean- Yep! I said, cutting her off, and I jumped in beside Twilight. My limbs were all over the place, and I think I managed to be even worse than Twilight. The nobility around us looked on in surprise, and Luna put her hoof to her muzzle as she started chuckling to herself. She watched the pair of us boogie like a couple of fools. The princess gradually started to get a little more comfortable as she watched us, and after a minute, she approached my side and began trying to find her rhythm. She was much better than the two of us, but we now had three dancing goofs in either case. That three quickly became four as Pinky joined in, and with her came the children. I made sure to put myself in between them and Sparklebutt lest we get any more casualties. With Pinky here, our goofy dancing quickly became a game, and we each would make a silly dance while the others try to follow. Luna did a strut in place while bobbing her head back and forth to the beat. I threw my arms up and swung them back and forth above my head, and Twilight did... well, Twilight. We certainly had our fun. We went on like that for hours, eventually exhausting ourselves to the brink of collapse. When the party began to wind down, I found myself at the back talking to Cadence and Shining Armor. The two were about to depart, apparently having to catch a flight to their honeymoon destination. Standing at the door, Shining explained. Yeah, so we are heading back now so we can get enough sleep to get up in the morning. He looked over to Celestia and bowed. Thank you for presiding over our wedding, it truly is an honor. As he said that, Cadence nodded in agreement, and Tia looked at the married couple with a warm smile. That was my pleasure. Have a wonderful honeymoon, you two. The couple bowed their heads in respect and then turned to leave. Before walking out of sight, Shining and Cadence gave one last glance at the group of us standing at the back of the reception hall. We waved, and the two left. Watching them walk away, I felt Lauren take over. She leaned to the side, supporting our weight on our hip, and smirked. With a laugh, she said, Yeah, he's not getting any sleep tonight. Both Tia and Luna nodded in unison as she said this, and the wedding party quickly gained a blush on their faces. Shining's parents, who weren't too far away, also overheard Lauren's comment. Velvet broke out into a fit of giggles and Nightlight grinned, and threw his foreleg into the air, shouting, That's my boy! From amongst all the commotion, Twilight was a bit confused, but then suddenly she caught on, and her face became beet red with a puff of smoke. Meanwhile, Spike looked back and forth between everyone, and shrugged. I don't get it. I don't get it either. What does she mean by he won't be able to sleep tonight? Is someone gonna make a lot of noise? I don't get it. Oh, anyway, enough of that, and let's get on to our appropriate donators. Top donators are 630, J10 Man, Only One Thing, Subaru Orion, and Iron Sky. Darkside, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moon, Heart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Stu Hex, Sword Brother, and Mortred, Omicron Library, Will Chris, Twinkie, Ride Soul, Badass Waffle, Shadow Moon, Luigi88, and many more amazing people. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest.